Okay, in this video I'm going to show you how to make a D flip-flop. A D flip-flop is a one-bit memory cell. Now this, this flip-flop is an extension of a previous video, the RS flip-flop, which I've done. And actually, if you've, if you've seen that video, you'll recognize that these two, these two NAND gates here will make an RS flip-flop. This is better than your RS because it basically allows, it has fewer uh, unallowed states. I won't go into that, but just it, it's just a step up from the RS flip-flop. So like I said, it is one bit memory cell. And what it'll do is, it will remember your input. So your input will be D, and your output will be Q. Now, as with the RS flip-flop, we had a, a not Q as well. So to be honest, you could actually ignore that output. Uh, you don't even need to have an indicator on it because it's it just means that this one is it's the opposite of of Q, so it's not a, a big a big deal at all. Now, what's important about this flip flop is that there is a clock involved. That means that it, that the the we'll say the flip flop will only read or write or be re written or written r r read or be written to when the clock is high. So if the clock is low, the flip flop will do nothing. Now a very important thing here is the that if you have a NAND gate here, if you connect the inputs of your NAND gate, you will get a NOT gate. So A NAND A is equal to A NOT A. Remember that the NAND gate is universal is a universal gate, and every other gate can be made from it. And there's an example. So up here where I have a NOT gate, I'm actually going to uh, I'm actually going to use a NAND gate for that. So, once again, onto the circuit diagram of my uh, of my flip flop. We have an RS flip flop up here, and prior to that, we have another two NAND gates and a NOT gate. And I'm not going to go into much detail with this. Like the way I'm going to see it is, if you if you can do my previous videos or if you, those make sense to you, well then this one should too. The difference with this video is that I'm going to use chips rather than transistors, and the reason for it is uh, I've built all all the the you know the the fundamental gates and so on with transistors and now I'm getting onto memory cells which involve a lot of transistors for example a shift register which I'll be building in another video will take maybe 30 or 40 transistors so I'm using chips instead in this case I'm using this chip down here I'm using a HCF 4011BE chip it's a quad 2 input NAND gate now getting the, the pin out for these or the kind of the diagrams for these is, I found quite difficult so I've just sketched this one here. Now, just let's see if I can take this here. These, there's, these are some chips here, and if you see, there is a groove etched into the chip. That groove will be always on the left of the videos that you look at from, from me. So, in this case, there's that little groove there, and this chip has four NAND gates: one, two, three, four. If you want to learn how to power a chip, you look at a, another video that I've put up online. So, just to point out, we have a high. We have a low, and we have the we have basically six pins on the top and six pins on the bottom for my NAND gates. Okay, let's hold it there for a moment, and I'm going to continue. So the truth table is always all, always important, and this is the truth table for a D flip flop. Now remember that it will only do something when the clock is high. So if I have the clock high, the output Q will follow the input D. So when D is D is low, Q is low. When D is high, Q is high, and as I said, Q will just be the will be not Q. It's, or not Q will be not Q exactly. So when Q is low, not Q is high, Q is high, not Q is low, and when the clock is low, the output will be of, will will not change. In other words, whatever configuration your flip flop is in prior to your clock going low, it will stay in that until your clock goes high again. Okay, so if you have your clock low. If you keep continuing changing your input D, there will be no change in either of your outputs and it will stay in its previous configuration. Right. I think it's time to show you the show you the gate or the, the flip-flop. Now, unlike previous videos, I'm not actually going to build this in front of you. The reason is there are, there are a lot of wires, and like I said, if you if you can follow previous videos, you should be able to do this yourself. So points to note are I have two chips. And one on the top and one on the bottom as you look. The reason I have two chips is that the NOT gate is a fifth gate and I'm going to need a, a second chip, this one here, for that. I'm using a potentiometer. Let's see here. I'm using a potentiometer. 
and that basically is coming from my input so my input my my 9 volt battery is going into my potentiometer and from there onto my high line and the reason for that is I can I can vary the the input voltage onto my chips like I said look at a previous video if you want to understand it fully I also have not Q and Q now something I, I spoke about in previous videos but I'll speak about it again is that when you wire your chips often you will have false states or the, the outputs will be kind of they will be unstable and if you move your hand near it the, the outputs will change or if you touch a wire the output will change and the best way the, the best description or reason for that is that uh, when you have an input we'll say 5 volts in well then that, that's 5 volts but when there isn't when you when it's low it's not necessarily zero volts and there could be maybe one or two volts in it and the way to stop to the way the way to make sure that you either have a high or low is by connecting a resistor uh, a resistor from each of the the input pins to ground so what i'm using uh, in this case is quite a high resistance and it took me quite a while to figure this out so let's we'll let's just check this now one moment okay so I'm actually using a hundred kilo ohms. That's the that's the resistance I'm using. It needs to be that high. So I'm using a nine volt battery input. I'm using a potentiometer so I can uh, drop the voltage going into my into my gates and or into my pin my chips. And each of every single input that I have will have a, a resistor going to ground as well, all along here. And those resistors are one hundred and about about a hundred kilo ohms. So let's just show you this thing in action. So points to note are down here I have two wires. The green one is D and the yellow one is clock. So I'll do let's let's verify the truth table. So I'm gonna put clock low. And as you notice it happens that my happens that my uh once I get that in focus that my flip flop is having Q high. And look D is high as well. So if I my clock is low, D goes high or low, the input or the output does not change. So only when clock is high does my flip flop do something. So I'm going to put clock high. So when the clock is high, the flip flop will now follow D. D is high, Q is high. D is low, Q is low. And I have to actually pulling up my D wire here. So basically, if I move D, high and low, the output should follow it. That's exactly what's happening here. Now, if what I've what I've shown you there isn't fully clear, then please just put a comment on on this video, and I'll put more detail onto it. Now, there's something I've always wanted to do, or with these is, is basically get uh, get your your gates to respond to impulses from or input from light. So what I've here, I've if you can see that you can can't really see that, I have a photodiode. It's kind of difficult to see there. There's better a photodiode. It's got two pins. Okay, and it's a there's kind of a chip on the top then for light. This is an optical photodiode, so it's 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 sensitive to wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers. In this case, its peak wavelength is 550 nanometers, so it's directly in the center of your uh, of the visible light. So what I'm going to do basically is I'm going to put this this uh, photodiode from my high line and between my high line and D, and the reason is that if I have when light shines on my photodiode, that's how I'll actually write to my cell. So, now, what I have at the moment is that when no light is shining, in other words, D is low, I'm getting a low output. And when I shine light on it, D goes high. I find that quite interesting. So, there, that's how you make a D flip flop triggered with uh, a photodiode.